We'll talk about some of the things you'll see at the airport and maybe some other tips to make your stay at the airport a little enjoyable. And to help me explain some of that is my very special guest, Mr. Brian Long, who is the customer service manager at Jacksonville Aviation Authority and the airport. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Debbie. Appreciate it. Good to have you back. Good to be back. Now, as I mentioned, we talked with Ed and Lucia about getting ready before you come to the airport and help you get through security checkpoint and all. But there are some things that people still need to take care of before they actually get to the airport, and that includes parking. So can you talk a little bit about some of the parking options that are available now and some of the, maybe some specials that might be coming up? Well, certainly, Debbie. One of the most important things to remember is the closer you, you park to the terminal, the more expensive it gets. Mm -hmm. So if you park out in our economy lots, which are they have a 24-hour shuttle service, which picks people up on, on a 10 minute basis uh, you can park out there and they're called economy because they're really really inexpensive you can park out there for six dollars a day and that takes you right to the front of the terminal and drops you off and also when you return it picks you up from down in baggage claim area and takes you right back to your car uh, the closer you get the more expensive it gets obviously all the way up into valet parking which is actually right in the very front of the airport you can drop your car off and be valet uh, now if you are just dropping somebody off at the airport or you're having somebody drop you off or you're having somebody pick you up we also have a, a courtesy waiting lot and that price is absolutely free tell me more and tell me what more i got your interest didn't i <laughs> <laughs> well the courtesy waiting lot is lo located just before the terminal building uh, next to the jaa administration office and it's clearly marked courtesy waiting lot and there you can come in you can park there's a big jumbo top Tron type screen to see when the flights are coming in and it's also called the cell phone lot because people will normally when they arrive when they're able to use their cell phones they'll call their party to come and pick them up and it only takes two minutes to go up to the front of the airport from the, from the courtesy waiting lot so it's very convenient and like you said it is free it and is it's free. a great convenience for those people who don't want to keep driving in circles and don't really want to go in and pay for or parking. That's true. Now there are some discounts coming up on our parking for the holidays and you can go out on our website which is www.jaa.aero or you can call our parking department which is at 741 2277. And that's a 904 area code. That's a 904 area code. From out of and town. you can find out some of our very very special parking uh, prices that we have for both Thanksgiving and Christmas. And those are some real bargains, if some you're, especially if you're going to be gone for several days. Yes, you those can, are some real bargains. That's so true. Can you say the number again that people need to call to find out about those that's specials? That's area code 904-741-2277. Now something about when you're traveling, I know the airlines usually recommend that you arrive about an hour and a half or so before your flight to help you get through the check-in process and the security screening. So why is that also important as it relates to finding a parking place? Well, just when you're traveling to the airport, you know, like Ed said before, you want to plan your travel to the airport as, as carefully as you do the rest of your trip. And when you're coming and trying to find a parking spot and you're trying to get up to the airport terminal, taking your luggage, you may have several bags, you may have several children, you may have a large group. You want to make sure that you allow yourself enough time so that you can get from your parking spot onto the bus or onto the moving walkway to get to the terminal and get up to the security checkpoint. And as you mentioned, the most economical parking is just that. It's more economical and tends to fill up before any of the other options. So you mm -hmm. might come to the airport thinking, oh, I'm going to go into economy lot one or two and find that it's full so now you've got that extra time to go to another parking option find the parking and get in the shuttle and, and come around that's so right Debbie just leaving yourself a little bit of time mm -hmm. so that you don't have to stress so much right. well I know there's been some things going on at the airport we've got some new construction that's wrapping up and people will see if they haven't been there in a while, we'll see a, a new look in uh, some areas of the airport. Can you talk a little bit about that and what that change means to our passengers? Well, as part of the terminal expansion program, 
uh, the connector bridge, which is the area that you go from ticketing down to the security checkpoint in the courtyard, uh, is being reconstructed to make it easier for people to access back and forth. It used to be a large ramp that went straight down. And what we've done in order to make it more convenient for people and also to make it more like the rest of the airport and, and the new concourses is that we've done a reconstruction project. And we've been working day and night on that to get that ready. And that's scheduled to open, not completely finished, but open on the 23rd of November. So they're working day and night now to be able to get that. And you will see some new escalators, a uh, new ramp, a new, e new elevator service, and you'll be able to go and transition that easily both going and coming from the airport. And like you said, it's going to completely transform that area That's true. And, and make it more in line with the design of the rest of the concourses at the airport. So. And, we're, and we're also in the process of redoing all the old carpet and taking it out and putting down new terrazzo. So our, our goal is to have a completely carpet-free airport, which would be so much nicer and cleaner and brighter. Everybody will really appreciate that once it's done. Once it's done. Yeah, mm. well, we're getting there. That's It'll right. be ready for the busy holiday season. That's right. So people who do come and use the airport, there are several amenities and things that they can take advantage of. One of the ones that I think is really popular is our free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi is throughout the airport terminal. All you do is uh, use your, uh, your mobile device, whether it be a laptop or cell phone, and you can access uh, Jack's free Wi-Fi. And it's, uh, it's a great, great service. People love it. And, and it gets a lot of use, it I sure understand. Does. Mm -hmm. And it, supposing they have an electronic device and up oh, the battery's dying down, what can they do, Brian? Well, there's several places they can. Uh, all of our, 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 our modular seating throughout a new part of our concourse has plug-ins, and you just have to look for them. They have actually USB ports that you can plug in your mobile device, or they have regular power uh, cords that you can plug in as well, too. Uh, so that's very, very convenient for folks that have those mobile devices to be and, able to, re to right. recharge them. And because, like you said, they're on mod the module seating, so there's three per table, mm -hmm. and we have quite a few of those tables at the end of Concourse A and C, so you don't need to go find some place along the wall <laughs> or sit down on the floor. You right. can very comfortably sit in a chair while your devices are charging. That's true. That's and that's true. also a free... Uh, service that right. we offer. Another uh, another service that we've, we've been brought on by customer demand is we've installed a preferred passenger lane at our security checkpoint. And what that preferred passenger lane does is it allows folks who are traveling a first class, business class, or any of the leak uh, programs with the airlines to be able to access that lane by simply showing their boarding pass. And if you're wondering what programs for qualify to be able to use that, just go to our website at www.jaa.aero and we have a list of all the programs from the different airlines that service Jacksonville who are, have a, a told us that they would uh, let their passengers use that preferred passenger lane. And so it's not a charge to the customer, it's simply being a member or participating in that specific airline's frequent traveler or elite traveler. Mm -hmm. Program. That is correct. Uh, you, uh, it won't take you through security any faster, but it will get you up to security faster, potentially, if there is a long line in the regular queue. It pulls you out of the longer line into a designated line for that. That is correct. And there's no additional card needed from no, we the have, airport? We have it staffed during peak hours, and the staff person will verify your, your, your boarding pass. It uh, shows that you're a member of that program, and you'll be able to go into it. And it's self-service when, uh, when they're self-select when there's nobody staffing it. So you can still look at your boarding pass, look at the, the, the signage there, and if you're one of those members, you go straight on through. Very good. Now, with the, with the holidays coming, there's some things going on at the airport that if a passenger happens to be there during that time, they should really enjoy. Let, can you touch on some of the activities going on at the airport around the holidays? Yes, we have uh, our Travel Appreciation Weeks, which are coming up the week of November 29th, and that includes musical programs. We have performers that are going to be there. We have a lot of choral groups from local schools, which will be there throughout the entire week. And, uh, and of course, with the, uh, the decorations in the airport and everything, it's going to be a very, very festive and uh, enjoyable time for our passengers to, to enjoy. And that's also going to culminate on 
December 6th with a, a uh, what we call a, a vendor trade show where we have a lot of folks which will be coming out and uh, showing their wares and giving out free prizes, raffles, and things through the Visit Jacksonville network. And that been a huge success oh, in the past years we've, we've had. had to, we've had everything from the from the zoo to the alligator farm brought alligators out. It's been a great a great time and well received by our passengers. My favorite was the Peter Book Peter Brook chocolate samples. <laughs> yes, so, good. And the opportunity to win mm -hmm. free Peter Brook Peter Brook chocolate. Mm -hmm. But a lot of great attractions are represented mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. It's just a wonderful representation of what what's available in Jacksonville and and the passengers and visitors loved it. That's it's been, for sure. And that's Monday, December 6th. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I want to just briefly, in the few minutes we have left, discuss the ambassadors. We've got some wonderful volunteer ambassadors, and, and they can be such a help to, especially those who haven't traveled in a while or don't travel very often. Tell us briefly about our ambassador program. The reason that Jacksonville is such a successful airport is due to our ambassadors. We have about 50 volunteer ambassadors who generally serve about four hours a week. Uh, and they do this on a volunteer basis, and they're there just to help people. They're there to help people, you know, directional, where is this, where is that, what's beyond security, answer questions about 311, or all those things that, that you may not know if you're a rare or an infrequent traveler. Uh, if, they're, if you have a lost item, they'll be able to help you with that. They're, if you need somebody paged, they can do a lot of different things. And you'll see them. We have a, a, an ambassador booth, which is located at the beginning of the courtyard. Plus, our ambassadors are always roaming throughout the airport and are easily identifiable by their shirt that says JA Volunteer Ambassador. And what is the, when are they usually at the airport? Is there sort of a time frame when we try to have our ambassadors on site? We always try to have them during our peak times, but generally from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., sometimes earlier and later, uh, and uh, that's seven days a week. And you can find them not just pre-security, but the, they basically or, or are around throughout, the airport. Throughout from the front of the airport all the way, baggage claim all the way through security into the concourses. And that, now if somebody was interested, because it seems like that would be such a, fa I know our ambassadors enjoy it, it's such a fascinating opportunity to get out, meet a lot of people from mm -hmm. all over the country mm -hmm. and the world. Is there opportunities for people to become an ambassador? We certainly look for new ambassadors always because we're always looking to, to grow it and to, uh, and to get more people involved with it. So they can go on our website, as I have said before, www.jaa.aero, uh, and certainly or call our information line, uh, which you, they can call 741-2000 and uh, be able to, uh, to get more information on the ambassador program. Well, Brian, we're out of time. Oh Thank my. you so much for, for filling us in on all the exciting things going on out at the airport this holiday season. Thank you again for being my guest, Mr. Brian Long, Customer Service Manager of the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Brian. And thank you for joining us on this edition of the Airport News Show. We'll see you next time.